Greetings all, Shane Bruce, Rustin Mod Daisy. And we've got another hail and farewell video today. These are two guns that have recently arrived, or, well, actually got here a while back, but are now finally heading to the house. Uh, the first gun we're going to talk about is this little gem here. This is a Daisy Model 102. Let's get this rolled over. 102 Model 36, which is an ancient Daisy. This guy probably dates from the 30s. Got a cast iron lever. Um, client sent it to me and uh, stated the air tube was broken and wanted to get that patched up. So what we've done here is pulled the old air tube out, uh, replaced it with a 764 inch overbore air tube and new seals, and uh, reinstalled it with a factory mainspring. Uh, the gun shoots really well. Uh, it's, it's in the over 300 feet per second range. Uh, an older bottle cap daisy uh, with a very short air tube. Shorter than the standard Red Ryder air tube we usually see on the model 1938s, so the 11140s, and it has the button feed trap. Button feed trap, and you can see it right there. It's a little bit hinky to load, but you know, once you get the process down, it's not too bad. Um, I've never really messed with the, the small frame old daisies much, mainly because the butt stocks are so incredibly short, uh, and they, they've always felt a bit tight to shoot to me. But uh, this particular gun handles pretty easily, it comes up pretty good, and isn't too crunchy in terms of space restrictions. And it kind of like is the forefather of the Buck, and the 105 Buck, and other small frame daisies. You can see that the rear sight is actually the spring block. You know, I know we've uh, pointed it out, I th think that same feature on the number 101 um, model 36 that we did a, a pretty extensive set of repairs on, which was a single shot muzzle loading daisy. Uh, but, nice gun. Uh, the client uh, did not want any surface work done because it does have a really nice patina. Uh, and if you'll take a look around, oh, like here at the uh, rear sight spring block mount, you'll note that that's a very shiny surface. And then you'll also see that up here around the muzzle, there's some more evidence of an earlier surface coating. And I'm, I'm, I'm believing that this was originally one of uh, Daisy's nickel-plated guns. Although if you start looking into the history of the piece, you'll find that uh, way back in the way back, uh, Daisy did not have good success with traditional bluing techniques, so they had perfected something they called black nickel, which is a nickel coat with an oxide on top. Kind of strange. It looks dark when it's new. Uh, and there's a, you know, in the collecting field where that loves this model, people often talk about how folks polish their shiny daisies so much, or their black daisies so much, that they got shiny. Uh, because there was a nickel coat underneath that oxide layer. But overall, good solid gun. I'm sure the client will have fun with it. It's up and up to speed and running again. The gun behind it is a departure for me. This is a Model 1938B. A plastic trigger, plastic lever gun with a fixed abutment uh, with the uh, change in the uh, Latigo loop uh, going perpendicular to the bore as opposed to horizontal with the bore. Uh, to accommodate the ratcheting safety mechanism that this gun's built with. Uh, the customer sent it to me, it uh, tried to extract the trigger, and there's a little metal tab down here that will bend out if you horse around with it too much, which he did, and he bent it out. So he sent it to me to get that fixed. While we were at it, we went ahead and did some internal mods. We put the uh, Cobalt 327 Super Spring in it with a 764 air tube. Uh, the seals, the gun's virtually new, the seals were left intact. But this gun is now a super thumper. It is running better than 350 feet a second uh, and doing that consistently. Uh, one of the mods we did were basically to replace the uh, wood stocks with some curly maple stocks uh, cut in a Slim Jim fashion. Pretty nice looking gun overall. Shoots really, really well. Uh, we took the factory black sight off and installed a fiber optic front sight. Uh, I'm of the age where the the black sights in a dim environment don't work for me, but the little red dot sure does show up good. So this particular gun was uh, also a uh, curved grip plastic gun, but I had the stock and I put it on there and I really like the way it looked because it's a straight grip, kind of reminiscent of the older style small daisy stocks. And we put a three star lever on it too. So it's kind of a mix mash blend of old and new, uh, but it runs really well right now and hits really well. And that's what's important with daisies. But as I said, it's a 1938B. Uh, and this is the, the latest iteration with the plastic safety trigger and the seven click bear trap system in it. But it runs a lot hotter now than it did was new. 
and it's heading back to the client, hopefully tomorrow, via the USPS. Well, kids, that's all we've got for you today. These two guns are heading out. We'll have some other guns uh, coming back on the block, and other guns do in as we continue our adventures in Daisyland. This is Shane Bruce with Resto Mod Daisy, signing off.